Previously on Inside Training Camp. This one, really short chip shot. Yeah, 24 yard field goal. Oh man, he hooked it again. Wow. The preseason gets off on the wrong foot. It made me realize that I've got to change what I'm doing. I'm looking for men to show me that they have what it takes to join us on this journey. This week, the second game means a second chance. Here's Josh Scobie in from 40 yards. Deep breath, starting all over tonight. Here he is. We're going to push it. It's going to be a tough camp. There's going to have to be some trust. It's already been a long season for rookie kicker Josh Scobie, who missed two of three field goal attempts and the preseason loss to Miami. Scobie got it up and no good. He hooked it. Uh, well, obviously, uh, very disappointed in the kicker's performance. His uh, first kick, he uh, was excited and rushed himself and pulled the ball a little bit. Uh, the second kick, he had one of those grass to dirt kicks. You know, you have to start in the grass and go to the dirt and uh, miss the battle. Go up, and he hooked it again. Wow. But he, he was disappointing. Most kickers live in a world apart from their teammates. For Josh Scobie, the solitude gives him time to think and time to worry. Sometimes you need to go off and be by yourself and think about things, but the longer you sit there and think about it and analyze exactly what went wrong, I mean, the more you can get in trouble at times. I mean, what can I do? Sit there and sulk about it and say, oh my God, this is the end of the world. I just missed two kicks in a preseason game. I mean, no, that's not it. What I had to go back in there and say is, you know, I was disappointed that you know, I missed two kicks, but at least I made one, and I had to come out here this week of practice and work my butt off. Whenever I get my opportunities, I have to make the best of them from now on. I mean, I have to make all my kicks. That's all there is to it. Scobie has Jeff Chandler, number three, pushing him in practice, and Coach Jack Del Rio is increasing the pressure on both kickers. I want everybody standing around a kicker. Everybody. Del Rio puts even more heat on Chandler, the former Florida Gator. All the Gators, all the Gators on the team are running if he, hey, if he don't make this one. All the Gators are running. Mike Pete, all the Gators are running. All the Gators around the goalpost. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. We're all right, Jeff. Hey, go, go up there and kick that some more, man. Chandler really got rattled. He missed two, uh, two of his kicks that way with people, you know, running around and yelling at him and running in front of him and so forth. And uh, I think that's what happens to him in the ball game. He lets those exterior things rattle him a little bit. And he hears them and sees them and feels the pressures. And now, he, if he doesn't overcome that, he can't kick in the league. That's right. Wow. <laughs> 
I can't do it. I can't. A kicker or punter needs mental toughness more than physical toughness. There you go. There you go. Where the rock? Where the rep at? And it doesn't hurt to have a sense of humor. Strongest punter you've seen in the league right there. Chris Hansen. I'm going to go to my locker. Which way is it? It's that way. Okay. He's a beast. We've got a Florida State punter, Jesse Stein, that we signed on. He's obviously not going to threaten Chris Hansen and his job, but he's come in to, to allow us to back down Chris and the number of reps he gets and, and give us a good, a good look, and he'll get some experience. The new arrival allows the Jaguars to play place the face. Yeah, a couple of the guys are like, he looks like that guy off Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> right, he do look like a young Chuck. Thank you. He look like Chuck Norris in the uh, first season of uh, Walker. Walker, Texas Ranger. One way for a kicker to earn the respect of his teammates is to get a date with Miss Florida. If you make it to the NFL, maybe you can hang out with Miss Florida. Miss Florida USA, hello. And I'm just... You went to dinner with the punter, huh? Went to dinner, yes. Jesse and I go way back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the dinner date is the only action Jesse sees in Miami. Second half, maybe, right, Coach? Possibly. I'm going to let uh, him punt a lot because he hasn't punted in over a year. That's fine. Okay. So. Understandable. All right. When the Jaguars return home, Jesse Stein is released. They let him go, huh? They, they let Chuck go, man. What, did they say why they let him go or just? Didn't really see a need for me anymore, so they let me go. That was my man, though. After we bonded on the bus ride, after we bonded, we got to know each other. He was cool. Damn. I was MVP. Really? Yes, sir. Wow, man, Chuck. And what? I hope he's doing all right, man. Chuck, this is going out for you, man. I hope, you know, keep doing it, man. What was his, what was his name? A football training camp is a grueling test, especially when it means practicing twice a day in the Florida heat. You just sweat. That's how you handle the heat. There's no other way to handle the heat, really. So you just deal with it and uh, play football. When I looked at the forecast for the week, it's supposed to get hot. Hot. All week hot. What? What was that? It's hotter than the devil's drawers? <laughs> you get to the dog days of summer, of July, August, and September, Whatever we can do to keep these guys healthy and keeping them upright is very, very important. Each day, the coaches must decide how hard to push the players. It's a concern when tackle Maurice Williams has to leave the field to be cooled down in a tub of ice water. He's got a history of tap outs. Everybody in shape. You, you know what I mean? That's just that's blatant right What there. do you think, Finney? Okay. We're going to be in a game. Is he going to be out because of one series where he's hot? I wouldn't think so because he's in real world heat. He just says he feels like he's going to throw up and he's sweating like a dog. Okay. We'll throw up. I mean, has he got danger signs? No, we just sat him. We just sat him down to cool him for a second and planted we'll, him. Well, all right. Well, let's bring him back. What do you think? I, I think it's a mind thing. I don't think it's a condition. It's all mental. It's mental? Yeah. It's going to be hot, guys. We're in Florida. It's going to be hot. So get your mind right to handle it. You hydrate your body, you do the things you need to do. If you have a problem, we'll cool you down, but you gotta get your mind right to go. Are you okay with it? Look at the smile on your face. <laughs> what? They told me to chill. Mo, so hold your hand up, man. Hold your hand up, slap yourself. <laughs> the Jaguars offensive line came together last year, allowing just six sacks in the final eight regular season games. Saturday night at the sorority, roll the hips. I know they take pride in not letting me get hit. And as a quarterback, that's how you want it. Nice operation, O-line. That's it. That's good, Vinny. Good eyes. That's it, Mike Pearson. Nice job. Just like the president with, you know, five Secret Service agents around him all the time. You know, those guys are so good that we can do all the things we do as an offense. Well, good protection. All day. That's it. They only pulled out of too. My stomach's bleeding. <laughs> I'm bleeding internally. <laughs> Offensive linemen, they usually 
you know, they have their own type of vibe, their own sense of humor. Oh, come on! I, I heard there was a prenup. She didn't want you to take your shirt off the rest of your life. If you took your shirt off in the bedroom, she automatically got half. Yeah. Hey, E, we got the same body type. You just too no. old. <laughs> you ever go to your grandmother's house and she had old wallpaper in her, in her dining room? That, that's where Vinny's tattoo is. You get the matching one right there. Yeah. There you go. That's a nice one. That's the edge of the border around the ceiling. You know, you gotta be a little light, and there's a time to play around, and it's time to have fun, and it's a time to work. You know, the drudgery of two a days, you know, just go out there every day and just go bang your head against those big jamokes. I mean, it's, it's hard. I think the only thing that doesn't hurt on me is my balls. Hit me in the balls so they won't get spoiled. <laughs> Anytime there's a light moment, you know, we're going to jump on it. He is one of those guys that uh, you got to be careful how you say things because he's going to jump on whatever you do. I have vertigo. When we on the ground, you got vertigo. What does that mean? <laughs> vertigo. Vertigo. You don't even know what that is. Dude. Anything from politics to uh, the way a guy dresses or has his hair combed. That's my man. Man, you talking about a bad grade of hair. I don't even know what... Wow, I'm losing my hair, but damn, if I had hair like that, I want to lose it too. Some of the guys call me uh, OJ. <laughs> I don't I see it. I don't see a resemblance. But a lot of guys say they do. I got a fucking OJ. He smiles. He laughs as he throws. OJ smiling on the throw. But James Evans off of Good Times. Yeah, one or the other. If that ain't James Evans in the pilot episode of Good Times, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Preseason is the time when a football team coordinates its offense, its defense, and its look. Aiken, I need your help. What's going on? You look around the locker room, the white guys in here cannot dress. And you are just straight metrosexual. I mean, you always style. Is that a good word, metrosexual? Yeah, it's, it's fine. You're okay, oh, it is? okay, okay, okay I'll take that. Can you help uh, me out? Let's go. Help us out? Let's let's go. Go. How you doing, son? We decided you need some help. You're a single guy. You're a good-looking guy. But you don't have a girlfriend, do you? Correct. Okay. Probably the reason is you just don't know how to dress. <laughs> hey, B. Oh, here's my man. Hey, buddy. I mentioned to you earlier that I might have somebody to help you style it up a little bit. We'll have to ask now, the now, that, now that you know that it's aching, are you down? First of all, you think I need style, though? You have your own unique Do your job with myself. style, but I think we unique. can upgrade it a little bit more. Okay. A little black eye for the white guy. Okay. So are you in? Are you down? I'm in. This, I'm down. This fantastic idea of fashion. Black eye for the white guy. We're going shop. Regency mall, huh? Yeah. I'm going to pick out different outfits, different shirts. Maybe put you in a little nice hat, too, or something. Like those little top hats over there? What you think? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's try more. this pink can go here. Oh, wow. There you go. Wait, can we go with something other than the pink? You don't like the pink? That's, I'm not that secure, I don't believe. All right. Oh, my goodness. Come on, man. That's tough, Nick. What are we going to, a Grateful Dead concert Nick, or something? Nick, I don't... The sunglasses that serve no purpose. No purpose, exactly. Nick, Nick, we got the so fishing probably... lures. Are those the style? Can you please put that down, <laughs> OK? A little we'll, salt water, we'll, maybe a little fresh water. With Brandon definitely is one of those that, about. you know, when you go out, one of those guys that just stick out. You know, when you get up to the front of the line, you know, everybody's looking good. And then the bouncer looks at him and is like, nah, I just can't do it. I can't let him in just because what he has on. What is this you said? That's a fat farm. Fat farm. This thing goes over my ears. I'm fat and I come from a farm. Is that good enough? <laughs> People already think I'm a weed head with the long hair. I promise I've never done it before. Man, come on, no, no way. No with way. jeans jacket. That's what I'm talking about right there. Hey, sunshine, pop the collar. I pop the collar, Nick. There you go. So now I'm pimping. See, he shops at Walmart. He still shops at Walmart. Let me tell you a little something about Walmart. I can buy groceries. And my clothes all at the same time. What is that zipper going on? See? I bet you there's not even a pocket in there. And there's not even a pocket. There's a zipper for no reason. I've hit an all time low. I'd like to apologize to uh, the people I grew up with, to my family. <laughs> Come on, man. Boy, I like them shoes, man. Yeah. You're going for it. He's doing it. He's doing it. Those shoes right there. Doing what? We're doing good. Thank you, Aiken. I think the rest of the guys, the rest of the teammates are going to be impressed. And uh, I think we did well. The pimp is in the building. The pimp is in the building. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, okay. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon, after the game, the Navy said bring their pants back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool. spice. 
Hey, you know you were one. That's not bad, though. I give it up to Aiken for that. That ain't bad. That just took you about ten notches up in my book, buddy. All right, Nick. Preach. 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 You like it? You like it? Okay, you got the Lacoste. Oh, -hoo. Big time. Aiken hey, must do that because you got the big buckle. Yeah. It's all right. You look sporty, man. It's nice. Nah. I got to give it to Brandon, though. Brandon look like he, he, he can make, you know, 98 degrees come back. I'm telling you, he can get them boys back together looking like that. Escaping the drudgery of training camp is easy when you're a licensed pilot like Kyle Brady. But he never loses touch with the reality of NFL life. All you can really say to yourself is just, hey, I, I go out and try to get better every day, understand what I'm capable of doing and perform within myself. Nice shot, Kyle. That's it. You can take heart in being an older veteran that's had a lot of years of experience to know that you've had success at this level in every aspect of the game or you probably wouldn't still be around. Bang. Now come out. Oh, look at him. Look at him. The camera's on, y'all. Brady is being pushed by George Reitster, number 87. Brady is bigger and more experienced. Reitster is faster and a better receiver. Anything I touch, him catch it. In the preseason opener, Reitster led the Jaguars with three receptions for 52 yards. Catch Reister again. George Reister has had the biggest impact for Jaguar in this game. I'm trying to go out and play hard every play. I want to improve my blocking. <laughs> he's getting after guys. Even if he loses the battle, he's still fighting, which is encouraging. Damn, I slipped yeah, up. Just come over around there. You see that? I slipped yeah. off you at first. Did you win? Yeah. Well, he's understanding the pass again. He's kind of master pivot route and and running sticks. Cover two. There he is. Nice. Way to catch and turn up. Nice job, man. The tight end. Uh, I'd like to see George and Todd more with the first group. All right. Um, so Brady can get the same number of reps, just let him mix some in with the second group. Let's see if we can get a fire lit under him. He's, he, he, he's just got to be better. I mean, to, we turn it on in the game, and he should be a nasty man on a mission, knocking the hell out of him. He's never going to be a great receiver, but he could be a good receiver, a solid receiver. I'm just not seeing enough fire out of him right now. So uh, we need to light a fire. So let's let George and Todd get a little work in there, and uh, we'll find out more about them. The Jaguars had no idea that a midweek practice would turn into a dog day afternoon. Snoop Dogg invading football camps this year. Been invaded Jacksonville Jaguars, a little mini camp. See what they got, look at their little rookies and prospects. See how far they plan on going this year. See if they need me to step up my game and fill in the blank spots. New quarterback on the team, here I come. Church, Snoop Dogg coming to take over the camp. What's happening? How y'all doing? Y'all looking for a quarterback? Quarterback? Yeah. yeah. What left with you? Let me talk to him. <laughs> Where he at? He went to a meeting. Let me holler at him then. Okay, because I'm here for his spot. <laughs> who y'all who y'all number one receiver out here? Is it uh Jimmy Smith? Smith? 82? Send him on the post corner. <laughs> yeah. I don't need but 2.5 seconds to get it to him. <laughs> you know I'm trying to play quarterback, so if left oh, don't get the job done, holler at him. You need left way, okay. That's left which. This is his. This is the man I'm going to take his spot. Left which. Left-handed quarterback. Look at him. He used natural body oil, smelling good on the field. This my boy used to play for uh, play for the Steelers. Fu Matu Mafulu. He bad. Big old Samoan. I ain't gonna say nothing about him because he big. Just the man I wanted to see. We need to talk. If the quarterback thing don't feel good to you, give me a call, man. I'll do that. <laughs> I need to get on the field and see what I can do. In the back of the end zone. Nobody to look. Oh. On the run. One side punt. He, he is tall. Uh, he's able to communicate. Those are two good things. Uh, I think uh, Byron's safe. <laughs> Thank you.
With the preseason loss in Miami following a winless road record last year, Jack Del Rio decides to change hey guys, the so way his team travels. The next thing I want to talk about, I want to make sure we really understand. We said we're going to be road warriors, okay? Said we're going to learn how to win on the road. And there are a couple things I want to make sure that we get straight and understand of how we're going to conduct ourselves on the road. Coming back on the plane and really going out, the atmosphere on the plane is too much uh, funny, good time Charlie, it's not business enough for me, okay? From here on out, we'll be coat and tie. I want the shirts tucked in, looking professional. Right, something that really was irritating as hell. All right, when the lady comes on the bill and says, be seated, we're getting ready to land, or be seated, we're getting ready to take off, and I turn around and look back, we got eight to ten guys standing up trying to get their bags. That's a little thing that's irritating as hell. All right, so what I'm going to do is going to be real simple. If we are supposed to be seated and we're not in our seat, then I've got to be like Johnny, Johnny High School and I'm going to find him. All right? If I've got to do that to get the behavior that I'm looking for, I'm going to do it. The Jaguars started the same four defensive linemen 15 straight weeks last season. But rookies like number 93, Bobby McRae, are challenging those veterans. Hey, now, when we share this bag, I want a lockout shed. I want this bag. I want this sled on the side. Here we go. Good job. That's better, John. That's much better. Kill it, John. Kill it. Looks like we're going to be salty against the run again. They look real good in that first quarter of the other night against the run. And then and then we rushed the passer better. Hugh Douglas rushed the passer a lot better. Bobby McCray, he, he rushed the passer well, uh, which is we need some help in that area. Got to the quarterback a couple of times and showed some uh, tenacity. They played very well the first unit did. But the coaches are still waiting for Anthony Maddox, number 91, to emerge. So far, the fourth round pick from Delta State has been a disappointment. Come on, Eagle. Come on. It's kind of slow, Maddox. Get your rookie ass to going. Uh, don't sneak up on it. There you go. Next guy. You just sneak up on it. You're not exploding at all, Maddox. That's probably the toughest part of it all. In college, you kind of you didn't have your coaches on you every day, you know, on your back telling you to do this, screaming that you're doing that. I'm saying they expect a lot out of you. They make sure you, you know, you're going hard every play. I totally. Where the has that been the whole preseason? Huh? Where has that been? You've been waiting for something? Huh? You've been holding that back for some reason? I talked to some other guys, and they said he was their coach when they was a rookie, and they was telling me how tough it was. He's the same person all the time. So, you know, now I'm kind of, you know, getting used to, you know, just hearing him chew me out, so it's not as bad as it was at first. We're not going to wait for you to get your chin strap buckle last minute, take your time getting down. We are working high tempo. you got to match their tempo. All right, we're defense right now, basically a defensive look team, but we're not going to let you guys be sloppy. This is like us. We're up here, we're getting ready, we're getting set, we're making our calls, we're doing all our thing. We're just not being heavy on each other, okay? But I want to see urgency in how we practice. That's what we're going to do today, all right? Make sure you understand that. The young players like Anthony Maddox have a mentor in Tony Brickens. At 29 and still recovering from knee surgery, Brackens can only contribute by giving the rookies the benefit of his experience. Go. There you go. Maddox, you've been practicing that move, I see, huh? The Jacksonville defensive backs have created their own incentive plan. You get punished for mistakes. Middle errors, missed interceptions, lows, and techniques. And that punishment is financial. And they from $5, $3, $2, $1. It could be an expensive pot. No, it depends on how many um, brain areas you have, brain farts, whatever you have. <laughs> it only take three guys to agree for me to write down, okay, that was a mental error for you. So that's going to be $2 that you got to put on top of your five. There is no debating. If three other guys knock on the table and says we all agree that that's, that's a finable offense among us, your money's gone. If you get an interception, um, the guys, the defensive backs with the most interceptions at the end of the week, we all put in money in a pot outside of that and say, hey, we'll get the money at the end of the week. You get two picks, you, it's almost like a sure win. 
because it's hard to get picks in uh, training camp. No one had an interception this morning, so I'm going to go out here this afternoon and get one and give me another one. So, I mean, I have kids. So I got to feed them. So I need the money. <laughs> In football's big leagues, there is an affinity for big rigs. Hey, Mason, you big redneck, quit that. Empty box of uh, shotgun shells in the truck. Redneck, redneck. <laughs> I got a CD a couple years ago from Hanson, Chris Hanson, uh, for Christmas. That was my Christmas gift. He gave me a CB radio because I have a big truck. And he wanted me to be like a trucker. Ah, right, boys, let's get this convoy rolling. Wagon train style. What we need is we need split screen. You know, like this, Josie here, Hanson, Yoder, Meester. Let's see if we can't get some of these boys on the radio here. Breaker 1-9, Breaker 1-9. Yo, did you got your ears on out there? 10-4. Hey, Deuce, how about you? You got your ears on? That's a big 10-4, big dog. Beast, how about you, buddy? That's a big 10-4 now. Don't even think about passing this thing, because you might break down. I got you on my camera, Beast. You, you look like you're about to hit my bumper. Beast is trying to pass me in the Chevys. He's hot dogging it. He's going to blow that engine up in that Chevy. You got the Beast showing off. He's going to get a ticket. Be careful, Beast. Uh -huh. See, now these two boys here, they're just straight rednecks. One's from Iowa, the other's from Georgia. And you can tell they're in this competition because, uh, both of their trucks are like eight feet off the ground and little kids can walk underneath us. We're jumping the curb. We didn't get these big rigs for not jumping the curb. All right, we're taking the curb, boys. That's how you do it, boys. I mean, CB guys are cool, but you know, they ain't for everybody. Everybody don't put no CBs in their cars no more. That's like putting an eight track in your ride. 10 4, over and out. Oh, hey, Breaker Breaker 10 4. That, you know, everyone out with generally. we going to show them how real men do it. Fresh Yukon Denali, chromed out. You don't see that too often. You got the in dash flip screen. You got the 26 inch floaters. You got customized box in the back. You got to have your stuff right. You know what I'm saying? You got to have that chrome back the outside. The blue light. This is a GMC Yukon XL Denali. This is something I picked up this off season. A little bit of a family vehicle, but still a little bit of my personality. Can't do the minivan thing, you know? But uh, yeah, this can get me back and forth to Disney World pretty good. This is my uh, CL 500, no tint on the windows. Keep it clean. I figured I paid this much for the car. I want the people. They gonna see who's driving it, I'll tell you that. You know, people say, well, it's just a car. Yeah, it is just a car, it's my car. I'm working really hard to get it, and I'm gonna have it like I wanna have it. It's all about personal taste. We're beat up, bruised up. I wanna be able to step up and get in my car and stretch out a little bit. You turn on the music, kinda zone out a little bit. Just getting ready for that next day, getting ready for that grind. All right, Pete said it best, guys. Want to be a week better, right? Want to be one week better. That's what, that's what I'm looking for. Now, tonight, everybody's feeling a little pressure to make the team, pressure to play their best, all those things. Let's make sure we put a smile on our face and have a little fun. How about going to Oh, Let's go! Yeah, let's go, baby! Let's go! Let's go, baby! Woo-hoo-hoo! Hey, listen, two things, dog. We at home, and we're in the National Football League, dog. That's all I need to be said. That's all the motivation you need. Go out and have fun. Here we go. DB's on three. One, two, three. Let's do what we do. First down and ten. Here's Johnson pumping, and he gets it broken up, and it's plucked out of the air by the Jaguars. Paul Spicer got to the quarterback. Good job, Spice, man. Way to work it. Good job. Nice work. Nice rush. Nice rush. Knock off, Spice. Fast off. 
The Jaguars front four is winning the battle. They are too quick and too physical for the Buccaneers. Good job. Nice work, man. Good job. Good three and out. We should work up on a sack. I'm working on it, man. I don't, I, you're working on it all last year. I want you to get some sacks, okay? We, 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 I, can, I can work on them. I can't get none, though. I need you to get some. They need to go to the 45 for first down. Greasy lost it. That ball is loose and hot and recovered by Mike Peterson. So the Jaguars have been harping on establishing their pass rush, and they've had it in spades today. They've had 12 plays. We've had a couple of three and outs, a sack, and two turnovers. Nice work. Good job. The Jaguars hold Tampa Bay to 21 yards in the first half. The Buccaneers do not manage a first down until midway through the third quarter. We went three and out or better every time. Yeah, hey, I'm going to put it in. tell them. Let's keep rolling. Here's Sims on third and five under pressure. The Jaguars get to him again. Anthony Maddox was the first one there, Gus, that set it up for Ransom. Both of these guys coming from the inside. They do a great job of getting to the quarterback. Maddox gets there first. Ransom cleans him up. Good job, Maddox. Good job, Maddox. Hey, baby. Get off the Let's ball. Go. Get Let's off go, the ball. Yeah. Come on. Come on, Brandon. 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 Oh. Nice. Got new outfit, sack. Well, we should take you to get your new outfit every damn I'm thinking about it. Hey, dog, we're going to have a nice little defense. Yeah, yeah. You know, our key is to be consistent. Yeah, that's it. We get better every week. The defense may be getting better, but the place kickers are going from bad to worse. So, Jeff Chandler will get his opportunity. 49-yard field goal. It's down. Up. And no good. The kicking game still a problem for the Jaguars. All right, here we go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Shake it off there, Jeff. Shake it off. Protection looks pretty good. Actually, we're fine on the left. We just missed the kick. We just missed the kick. That's all. Josh Scobie takes his turn. In from 40 yards. Deep breath, starting all over tonight. Here he is. Got it down, up, and how about this one? Perfect. Got a flag. And a flag on the play. Delay game. Offense. So they'll back it up for Scobie, five yards. You know what? If Josh Scobie nails this field goal, it'll go a long way in the building of his confidence. Now, let's see how he responds. Scobie from 45 yards away. It's down again. Up, and he pushed it. Oh my goodness. You've got to be able to count on one of those guys. He just came off my heel right when I kicked it. I knew it came off my heel. I was just inside on my plant. I thought I hit the ball. All right, hey. Settle down, let's go. Right. I'm good now. All right. The coaches decide to give Jeff Chandler one last chance to stay in the competition. Gotta make a kick. Let's go, finally. Let's go. So Chandler into attempt a 42-yarder. He missed a 49-yarder. Got it up. And no good. Oh, wow. Good. Oh, my God. Don't battle. Don't battle. Relax. We'll find one. That's ridiculous. That's a chip shot right there. I'll tell you what, they may be making a few calls at halftime. <laughs> For what? A kicker. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is tough action here. These poor kids, I feel for them. I really do. It's a lonely position to begin with, and this makes it a lot lonelier. There's going to be a bunch of kickers in here next week. <laughs> like 20 of them. Chandler's already proven that he can't, can't be the guy, so we might as well give the young kid an opportunity to see what he does. Okay, all right? Blue 80! Left with John of the shotgun, Brady, Taylor and Edwards in the back. Kyle Brady's night follows a now familiar pattern. Kyle Brady with the catch and the big fella. There is a good play, then a hard fall. Nicely done by Kyle Brady. Nice job, Kyle. Get your win. We'll get his win. Nice job, nice job. And finally, in the red zone, a missed opportunity. Play action, left which looking. 
delivers. Brady at the five. Is it a catch? Come on. The f attack going. And they're going with the hurry-up offense. Now we're probably going to have a challenge. I saw that. We got to get the f attack going quicker than that. Kyle, please tell me you caught that. Kyle. What? Please tell me you caught that. Hey, let them believe I did. Brady makes a little move to the outside left, which lets him clear, fires it in there. That's one heck of a good throw. Uh, he looks like he's fighting it on the ground, and that's probably what the defensive back saw. I saw him drop it. That's why I wanted to tap. After review, receiver dropped the football and hit the ground. Wow. It's an incomplete pass. It will be second and two. Another bad call, Luke. Not the only one, I know. It's all right. We've got to keep our composure, though, right? Oh, you go, we going deep now, baby. We about to take you deep. Six, count it. Count it. <laughs> Byron Leftwich is making all the throws, but he's not getting any of the calls. blame Jack if he's upset. Here it is again. Now watch. He lost. Wait a minute. Catch. One. Two. That's a touchdown. The play's over. Doesn't matter what happens out of bounds. That's a bad call. Listen. Rolling on the field stands. Oh. Pass. Second down. No, 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 that's, that's a bad call. With their first team timeout. Wow. That's a bad rule. That's a bad rule. All right, here we go. Hey, Tony. You were just trying to be right. That's a touchdown. You're Jack just trying Martin to be right. We'll talk later. We'll talk later. All right. As a second-year pro, Leftwich still has much to learn, like when to run and when not to run. And he goes down to the 22-yard line. Byron, you got to learn how to slide. Hey, you better with that, Hey, I'm all right. Hey, you better get low, boy. Oh, you know, you better get low. Take them damn hits. What's wrong with you? Don't let nobody hit you like that. Man, get your ass down. I was trying to get that first. I like the way, yeah, I like the way you want it, but let's yeah. make sure it's a little more meaningful than hey, this. Hey, hey, hey. You know you was damn. worried. You were a little worried about that one. I kind of like it. Though. Hey, no. But damn, coach, that's a quarterback. Though. I know once he got up, I like it. <laughs> the hit on left, which made Jack Del Rio nervous, but a late hit on backup quarterback David Garrard makes the coach explode. Back. You better protect back up, my quarterback. Back up, He's all over here. Back up. That's terrible. You got to protect him. Looks like Jack Del Rio has given one of the officials an earful. This is great work by David. He really hides his football and then uses that speed to the outside, switches the ball to the outside arm, and then he gets a little stiff arm, and that extra push outside the white line is what Del Rio is arguing about. You better control quarterback. Getting hit out of bounds. I'll take one for that. I'll take one for that. That's my quarterback. You got to protect all your quarterbacks and look at him. Jack's not happy about that at all. He feels like he's getting a bit of a raw deal in his own backyard tonight. Gets a bad call in the end zone. They're roughing up his players. I'm wrong. I apologize. That's, that's, I, but, I, because the emotion, but the emotion to me is I'm protecting a quarterback. Exactly. And I understand that perfectly. How about if you do it from like this far away or something right. like that? All right. I, I, admit, I, admit, I admit that was yeah. wrong. I admit. You all right now, Coach? Yeah, man, I hate I hey, blew a guess. You was about to move that ref ass. I, blew, I, th I thought about it. No, you know what? We, they showed a highlight of you today, and I seen your eyes and how you had that same fire you had when you was on that highlight reel, dude. Hey, yeah, man, it's in you, it's in you, man. <laughs> hey, dog. No. You can't fake it if it's in you. It's in there, it's not. We're glad to go ahead and come get you out of uh, Duval County tonight. <laughs> you was tripping. Uh, yeah. I, I apologize to him already. <laughs> you was tripping, though. <laughs> hey, I'm just protecting my nah. guys. Second down. Third nine. string quarterback Quinn Gray delivers the most spectacular play of the night. Breaks a tackle, throws on the run up top, and it's caught. Matthew Hatchett, touchdown Jacksonville. Right. What an athletic play by Quinn Gray. I think this team made a great leap from last week's game to this week's game. Offensively, defensively, special teams, other than the kicking game itself. Congratulations on a win, okay? It's always, it's always better than the alternative. Right, so well done. 
And I thought in the first half, now we came out, and that, that's the idea in terms of starting fast. We just have to finish the deal. You know, when we get down there in the scoring zone, we got to have at least three, and we got to come away with seven a good percentage of the time. Got a little ragged at the end. Third and fourth groups and all that. Got a little ragged at the end. We're, we're in a process. I'm doing a nice job working. Still have a lot of work to do. The agreement was we get the W. I'll see you, I'll see you what? Sunday morning. What? <laughs> No, that's Friday right now. You got tomorrow. I'll see you Sunday. So. No, seven. Seven. Yeah, I keep thinking, but I can use that time. Go ahead. $50. <laughs> I like the way you did this, but it's <laughs> a smooth Joe Real retirement fund. Okay. It was smooth over there, Spinny. It's pretty slick, though. Okay, let's go ahead and go through the game. Uh, our tight ends. Brady had 19 snaps. Um, he had one catch. He had the one tough drop. No, I thought he, I thought he should have made that play. He blocked well overall. I thought he. Play well enough to win. Much more determined effort. You just gotta, you know, just gotta talk to him about it. Can't be a one week thing. Uh, Brandon Green, you know, he plays hard. He has a sack. You know, he hustles and he's got some give you a thousand percent. I thought McCray was inconsistent. Uh, didn't look as as sure or as fast as he did last week. Sometimes he uses speed, and sometimes he doesn't. Uh, him and this next guy, Barnes, grabbed me up the wall. Uh, Barnes was inconsistent with his speed and got knocked down easily way too much. Defensive ends are really in the same situation with uh, Lionel, Bobby, Brandon, and Bullard. You know, four guys fight for basically two spots. Ephraim was better than he was a week ago. He had 28 snaps, but he still goes back to the comfortable, I'm not going to miss and he gets bull rush because, you know, he's got to learn to trust that, hey, it's working for the other guys. Keep trying. Plus, James Pete. Uh, but we, we, definitely have, we definitely have a problem there. I, I, I wouldn't see any reason to keep Chandler any longer. I, I just uh, get him going and, and let the young kid kick this week and see if he'll come through. And if not, we got to hit the waiver wire and get a kicker. We, uh, we will explore all options, and uh, we will find a kicker that can help us get it through the uprights. It's no surprise when the decision is made to release kicker Jeff Chandler. But a second player is also released, and this cut is deep and painful. Tony Brackens was with the Jaguars for nine seasons, and he's the team's all-time leader in sacks. We don't have the luxury of just taking care of you through camp right. like we did last year. Okay. Well, I appreciate, appreciate it. Okay. Never easy to tell somebody that their dream is over, at least as far as being a part of the Jaguars. It's the worst time of year for a coach. You know, I told him straight. I said, you know, we're, we've come to a decision that it's not going to work with you here. And out of respect for you, if you still want to play, I'd like to give you the opportunity to move on. It's not a bad thing. You know, it might be a blessing in disguise. You know, you never can tell. And you always prepare one day for this, this moment, and uh, my moment has arrived. This time of the year is one of those cutthroat part of the business that uh, you really hate. It doesn't matter how many years you have in this league, they're always trying to replace you with somebody younger and cheaper. You get attached to a guy, I've been playing with him for nine years, so it's, uh, I'm so unfortunate, you know, I miss him as a teammate. You know, one day they're here and the next day, you know, you don't see them again. You can't sit down and worry about it too much, regardless if they're a close friend or not, you gotta move on. Chris Carter told me something a long time ago, it's two things you take away from this game money and memories. Try to get as much as both as you possibly can. First of all, we're going to do what we have to do to put the best guys on the football field, have the best team. That is just the way it is. That's something where your heart goes out to them, but you, you have to do what you have to do. On the next Inside Training Camp, boys will be boys. The veterans fight to keep their jobs and the lifestyle that goes with it. You get a lot of voters out here. Kyle, that's the most determined 
effort I've seen in a year and a half. It's the only way I can become a movie star, man. I gotta get hurt. Only the strong survive. <laughs>